proteins and fats. Today I want to talk to you about how they affect your body and how they're used in the glycemic index. First of all guys, I'm Coach RJ from www.fitclub.fit and we specialize in the belly burn. Now the glycemic index primarily applies to carbohydrates containing foods because carbohydrates have the most direct and significant impact on blood sugar levels. However, proteins and fats can influence your blood sugars, but they don't work the same way as carbohydrates do to spike your blood sugars. So the glycemic index, if you go back to a few of my videos where you just look up Fit Club Winnipeg, glycemic index, I'll break it down for you in details. But today, I just want to talk about proteins and fats. Now, when it comes to proteins and fats, they have minimal effect on blood sugar levels because they're broken down into amino acids during digestion rather than being converted into glucose. So amino acids, as you know, are generally termed to help build and repair your muscles, okay? Whereas glucose is primarily used for an energy level. So for instance, if you needed something fast, let's say somebody was going into a diabetic coma, their blood sugars were low, the last thing you wanna to give to them is a protein shake. The first thing that you wanna to give to them is something like a piece of bread or a candy that is really high in sugar and is in high in the glycemic index. So proteins generally sit pretty low because their digestion takes a lot longer. Whereas carbohydrate containing foods that have higher sugar, they are going to be broken down faster and they're going to spike your blood sugar levels. Now when it comes to proteins, they have minimal effect on your blood sugar levels because they're broken down into amino acids rather than digested into direct glucose. Now, proteins, amino acids, are generally termed to help with your building and repairing of your muscles, where glucose is meant for short energy, okay? So instead of repairing your muscles, glucose is gonna help to give you instant energy. So if you have to go to run because you're late or you gotta work out, then glucose is your primary used energy source for those types of things. But the way that protein and carbohydrates play a role together is that first of all, you never wanna have a carbohydrate alone, especially if your goal is to lose weight or you're trying to maintain your weight or drop some body fat, because if you had a major spike of glucose and you didn't earn it or you're not planning on burning it, so what do I mean is that you didn't work out prior and you don't plan on working out later or you didn't have a great workout week or you don't work out at all, then you absolutely would never wanna have a carbohydrate alone. So what does that look like? A high glycemic carbohydrate meal would be something like rice, so white rice, and then there's a Filipino meat that's called tocino, which is a sugar covering sauce. And so yes, you're getting some protein from the meat, from the tocino, but it's primarily sugar and carbs. And so what ends up happening is you get this massive carbohydrate spike, and you didn't earn it, and you don't plan on burning it, then what ends up happening is that you go above and beyond what your body actually needs, and above what it needs is going to get stored as body fat. Now, protein, if you can mix it in properly, is, would be like if you had white rice or mixed with some type of plain chicken, right? Some type of steak, something that is just high protein so that you get your carbohydrates from the rice, and then you get a good serving of meat. And I would actually encourage you to mix some type of greens in there so that it can absolutely help to slow down that digestion, thus keeping you fuller longer. So the next time you look at your plate and if it's all starches and sugars, well, guess what? If you didn't earn it and you don't plan on burning it, then you shouldn't be eating that much plate. Now for everybody else, it might be some type of big bowl of pasta with a piece of bread, garlic toast or something like that. We're looking at this and this whole thing is kind of like a white brown mix. There's no meat in there. Even if you put a little spaghetti sauce, if the majority of that dish isn't a protein dish, then you're looking at a high glycemic spike. And again, anything that's high glycemic that isn't being used is going to get stored as body fat. So make sure the next time that you look at your plate, that it's heavier onto the proteins versus the carbohydrates. Now, when it comes to fats, well, fats have virtually no direct impact on blood sugar levels. If you look at the glycemic index and you look at 
whole fats, then you would see that there is zero to like 20 on the rating scale. So the rating scale goes from zero to 100, whereas like a fruit roll up would be 100 and zero would be water, okay? So some types of fats would be really low. And so when you're having your food, you wanna make sure that you're adding your carbohydrates, you add your protein, but you also make sure that there are some fats in there because fats actually provide taste to your food and fats are the slowest to digest. So if you have the fats, you have your protein and a little bit of carbs, then the fats are going to be make the whole meal slowly digest. This way you don't get that insulin spike and you don't get all that extra glucose into your system right away so that you have time to digest it and so that your body has time to utilize that fuel and that none of that or the majority of that won't get stored into your body fat. So in summary, while the glycemic index concept primarily applies to carbohydrates, but if you incorporate protein and healthy fats into the meal, then it's gonna help to mitigate the insulin spike, slowing down the digestion of those carbohydrates and thus preventing body fat storage. Now we have a program called the Belly Burn Challenge, okay? It's a 28 day program where on average people lose anywhere from eight, I've seen all the way up to 26 pounds just depending on the person and how detailed they follow to the system. We basically break it down for you step by step and I can almost guarantee success that if you follow the process that your coach lays out for you and you follow it to the T and you ask the right questions, then you're going to get similar results. And if this sounds like a program for you, then go to our website, www.fitclub.fit. Do you have to be a member to do the belly burn? No, you don't. But does it increase your chances of burning more calories and building more muscle by working with this in person or virtually? Then yes, then let's get you started on the five day challenge where it's only five days for five bucks. So go to the website, www.fitclub.fit, get started, mention the belly burn, and we'll go from there.